Now, the reason I even bring this up and included uh, Travis's quote here is at this conference that we were just at a couple of weeks ago, okay, I didn't speak at it, I tabled at it. Um, a woman came up to my table and she picked up my New Age Bullshit DVD, which is available here today in the back. And she said, what's this about? With a real skeptical look. And I said, I explained, I said, well, it's a seven hour extended pod, po video podcast that, uh, has many, many slides. Okay. I, I gave a shortened version of it at the Free Your Mind conference in Philadelphia. And this is the extended version that goes deeply into the deception of the New Age movement and how it is a religion that is designed to suppress the masculine side of the personality, which is the side that actually takes action and creates change. Okay? And that's, of course, pushed by the sacred feminine, which is care and creativity, or, and compassion, right? Both need to be present. We're going to talk about that here today. But I said, this is about the suppression of that masculine energy. And that's what the New Age movement is about. The suppression of the masculine, right? So, I said, what the New Age religion wants to teach people is just accept everything the way it is, no matter how unjust it is, no matter how deplorable the conditions are, no matter how much evil, evil is taking place in our midst, accept it. That's the New Age religion. And here's what she said. Here's what she said. That's exactly how I am. I just accept everything. I don't make any judgments on anything that occurs, no matter what it is, no matter how it's perceived. You want to perceive it as evil? That's your judgment. I said, yes, it is my judgment. You know why? Because it's evil. It really is. There is such a thing. I said, and you're content to let evil run amok and take this whole world because you don't want to act. Because what's really there is cowardice. That's what it really is. Okay? She didn't want to hear that. She said, I prefer not to see it that way. Now, align this with the quote. I prefer not to see it that way. Okay? And I hope by some miracle she happens to see this presentation at some point. Okay? And, you know, in hindsight, I didn't say this to her on the spot, but I thought about it for a little bit the next day. And what I should have really said is, no, you prefer not to see, period. That's the truth. Okay? So, I prefer not to see it that way means, no, I want to ignore reality. I, I want to believe what I want to be true is the way that it already is. And this is what the New Age hoax is peddling to people, okay? So, great quote that I thought accurately sums it all up. See, she, this woman also told me that she is a follower, quote unquote, of the uh, New Age ideology that is referred to as the Course in Miracles. How many people have even heard of this? A lot of people, okay? You know what that is? It's called solipsism, wrapped in a nice, neat new package. Solipsism. How many people are familiar with the ideology called solipsism? Good. More than I would have thought. Most people have never heard of this. Okay? Solipsism is a completely egoic and destructive ideology that has absolutely no bearing or resemblance to truth in any way. And the people who are solipsists are mentally ill. I'm not even going to provide any evidence of that. I'm telling you, you need to research this religion and sickness for yourself. It's a mental illness. A solipsist is a mentally ill person who should probably be somehow removed, segregated from society, and institutionalized until they are made well, because they are a destructive influence on society. This is what I focused on on podcast number one of my podcast series and radio shows. I went into the ideology of what solipsism is and how destructive it is and how it's a religion, okay? What this is, well, first of all, let's look at the word. And you'll, you'll notice I'll be breaking down words all day long. 
Because if you don't understand where words came from, you don't really understand what they really were intended to mean. Regardless of whatever connotation they may have taken on in the modern world, the intended meaning of the word, the original meaning, is derived from its etymological derivation. You need to go into the ancient languages, Latin and Greek roots and other languages, Germanic, Arabic, etc., and you need to break down the words from their etymological origins. Then you will understand their real meaning. And I'm telling you, you do this, and the top of your head will blow off by what you will find, by what words we speak on a daily basis actually mean, and we have no idea what they mean. Okay? So the word solipsism comes from the Latin adjective solus, which means alone or one. And then the Latin pronoun ipse, which means self, myself, etc. Okay? The ideology of solipsism is that nothing exists outside of me. I'm the only being that exists in creation. Or essentially it's another way of saying I'm God. Okay? That my perception is the only real perception and no one else is here. Now imagine that. Now, what I'm telling, what I'm actually essentially telling the audience here today is your perceptions are not the truth. You have to work to align your perceptions with the truth. That's damaging enough to the human ego, okay? If I just said, none of you exist, I'm only perceiving your existence, I'm the only one who exists, imagine how egoic that statement is, and actually how demoralizing it is to other people, you're even telling them, I don't even consider that you exist. That's what a solipsist is. They believe the universe is a big illusion created for somehow for their amusement. And that there's no objective reality that you don't exist, you don't exist, you don't exist, you don't exist. I'm the only one who exists. And that's not mental illness. We don't diagnose that as mental illness. Okay? I, I don't care if you want to accept the notion everything is one. I personally accept that notion. I do accept that we are all one. That doesn't mean you're not existent in the physical domain right now as I'm talking to you. Of course we all exist here. We are in the physical domain. Okay? The whole point is, these people want to believe the entire spiritual, do uh, physical domain is such an illusion that nothing that takes place in it matters or has any significance and should just be watched and nothing should be done to change it. And, you know, let me explain what this is, folks. When I was a Satanist, okay, and I was working inside the Church of Satan and other dark occult organizations, they have a, they have a set of sins, believe it or not. They don't look at them as sins in the same way that, like, you know, religionists look at sin. But they have the things that, these are behaviors and thought patterns that should not be engaged in by the dark occultist themselves, by the magician, if you will. You are not to engage in these behaviors. But we are to peddle them to other people. We are to get them to engage in these behaviors. Okay? You know what the first one is? No, it's not. That's the, that's the second or third. I think it's the third, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have the list handy. But the first one is stupidity. That's the first satanic sin. Okay? For the dark occultist. But they want other people in deep stupidity. They want other people in deep ignorance. The idea here is we will know it all. We will know the truth so that we can control others and keep them a dumbed down herd. Okay? There's a bunch of other ones, but I think the second or third is solipsism. Solipsism is one of the biggest sin for, for Satanists and dark Luciferians and dark occultists. They don't want any, they don't want any of their membership believing in this mental illness nonsense. Okay? But they want to pr propagate it and peddle it. They want to do that. And they, they told me personally, higher ups in this network told me personally when I was working with them, wait until you see the new age books that we, our membership will be writing or either writing ourselves or putting into the hands of useful dupes to write and put out there. We'll be giving them the idea, they'll write it for us, put it out there as their own idea. And they said, we are going to propagate and peddle solipsism like you have never seen. And you know what? When they say something, they do it. I'm serious. 
They're aligned, their act is together, they act on the same page, and for that I have respect for them as an enemy. And I don't take anything they do lightly. I recognize they have the will. They're not like the rest of, of hu humanity. They, they, they align their thoughts, their knowledge, with their version of care, you know. It's not like our emotionally based care, but they care about what they're doing, and then they act. And when they act, they act in concert, and they get it done. Okay? I'm not saying, you know, I agree with any of their agenda, because I don't, and I'm trying to stop it. But I have respect for their unity. They are unified and on the same page, and humanity is not. And that's why, in all honesty, we're having our rear ends handed to us in this spiritual battle right now, at least right now. Solipsism is the ideology that only one's mind is sure to exist. Solipsists contend that knowledge of anything that is outside of one's own mind is unsure, and hence there is no such thing as objective truth. Okay? No such thing as objective truth. And therefore, nothing about the external world and its workings can actually ever be known. Just think about that statement. It's saying... No one can ever know anything. You cannot come to know anything at all. There is no such thing as knowledge. So what I would say to somebody who's following the quote-unquote course in miracles, or a course in solipsism, or a course in acceptance of all forms of evil in this world, is you can't know anything by reading the course in miracles because nothing can be known. You know? How could a solid, why would a solipsist ever pick up a book? Why would a solipsist ever watch anything? Any video? Why would a solipsist ever engage in a conversation with another human being? You know? Tell a solipsist you can't know that you're going to fall off that cliff, so why don't you go try to walk over it and see what happens? Because you can't be sure of anything. They won't do that though. You know? The whole point here is, this is a religion. This is a new age religion. And I'm telling you who it's peddled by. It's peddled by the occultists who have the knowledge of how natural law works and are trying to put out whatever ideologies they can, destructive ideologies they can, to get people not to understand it. Or to even go so far as to believe that nothing can be understood. Why would you bother to look into natural law? Nothing can be known. It's unbelievable that anybody would be so gullible and naive to fall into this mindset. Let me just tell you what it really is. It's a person who has given up on life. They feel that it's so difficult to know anything and they don't want to do the work to come to that level of knowledge that they just said, I don't believe it can be known. That makes me feel more comfortable in my ignorance and laziness. That's the, re that's the truth about what solipsism is. Okay? And that's the truth about my friend I bumped into at the, at the MUFON conference. And I'd say that to her face. Okay? So, we have to realize we're, we're battling this force. This, and this, this religion is on the rise. Solipsism is on the rise. More people are becoming solipsists or solipsistic in their beliefs, in their, in their thought processes.